Hey golfers, Drew Mahold here with Second Swing Golf, and I've got two special guests with me today. I've got Danny Farrell and Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitters at Second Swing Minnetonka. And today we've got really five key points to talk about. Uh, all these kind of uh, you know, fixes and issues that need to be corrected in fittings that you guys notice the most. So um, let's just jump right into it here. Uh, I know you guys kind of were talking before we got started here about spin being the most important one, and that can kind of go throughout the whole bag. So, so Danny, get us started with spin. Why is that such a big issue for golfers? Well, I mean, spin dictates how the ball is going to react once it either hits a green, flies outside, or even the distance that you're trying to get out there. Mm -hmm. If we don't have you in the right loft, we have no idea how the ball is going to react outside. A lot of players come in, you know, the, the depth right now is trying to get more distance. Yeah. Everybody's tuned in on that. So how do you get more distance without picking up club head speed? Shave off a little bit of loft. Mm -hmm. But it can be detrimental for players if the ball doesn't launch and if it sure doesn't spin to make the ball stop on the green. So playing the right loft, making the ball spin properly is really what everybody needs in their golf bag. We sure. see it time and time again, players in the wrong loft. Yeah, and then coming back to like ball flight, the ball mm -hmm. flight laws, if the ball is curving to the right, mm -hmm. it's going to spin a lot more. You mm -hmm. basically generate a lot of backspin. You think like about a, a tennis shot, for example, backhand shot, that thing, that ball is going to spin backwards. Yep. It's going to cause the ball to not go very far. Yeah. You get that forehand shot kind of coming through there, you can get that ball to turn over right to left, mm -hmm. you're going to reduce the spin drastically. Sure. Yeah. It's actually a good uh, kind of parallel there between golf and tennis and that spin because I, as a tennis player myself back in the day, I remember you really ripping that wrist over to get that yeah. top spin on that forehand. But I think that's so why you're so good at drawing the ball, Drew. Oh yeah, <laughs> sure, something like that. Um, number two now, you guys mentioned uh, the equipment they're playing, specifically maybe the golf shaft. And I think that's one that sometimes falls behind the radar because you think club head, club head, club head. These manufacturers come out with you know new clubs and all the technology behind it, but really the shaft is kind of the engine sometimes. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. I mean, uh, Dynamic Gold is a great example. The old Dynamic Gold R3, R300, S300, X100. People don't understand how heavy the R300 golf shaft is. It used to be put in a lot of older technology yeah. and get people coming in for fittings a lot of times and you can see the Dynamic Gold label and they're not swinging very fast. That is where we're going to make some huge improvements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, when you brought up the point of weight, I mean, from 126 to 130, that's really what all three of those shafts were. All within five grams of each other, but completely different flexes. Yeah. And back then, older tech was shorter too, 36 and a half on a seven iron. That's changed a lot in fitting too, where you see somebody come in that's six three, six four, and they're playing a club that's not only yeah. short from today's standards, but short for their height as well. Sure, so, sure. So you know, playing the right golf shafts, the right flex, the right weight, Good Lord, can we pick up some distance for players? Yeah, the and time. it's the same with like driver too. I always yeah. like to say, play the lightest golf shaft that you can control. Yeah. If you're playing something really, really stiff and heavy, there's a chance it's harder to control. Mm -hmm. But if it's really, really light and your tempo is really, really quick, you're also gonna have a hard time controlling it as well. So yeah. play the lightest golf shaft you can keep the wool straight with. Yeah, sure. And yeah. then the, uh, speaking of drivers, you guys talked about loft on mm -hmm. drivers. You talked about loft already a little bit with the, the how it relates to spin, but yeah. Um, you can kind of, specifically with driver, I think there's a lot of players out there that um, can really optimize their distance off the tee just by making a simple tweak there. Yeah, I mean, there's, when you look at a driver, it's either going to be a distance club for a player or it's going to be a fairway finder, right? We always ask, well, what type of, of driver do you want in your mm -hmm. bag? Do you want to hit more fairways? If so, then we might want to add a little bit more spin to kind of stabilize that flight or add more loft for the yeah. player. If you're just looking for pure distance, let's shed a little bit of loft make that thing knuckle, and then let it go from there. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's the number one question we get asked as a fitter. How much loft should I play on the driver? Well, how do you want the driver to perform first? You know, once we get on track, man, see some numbers, see launch and spin, that's when we can really dictate and answer that question mm -hmm. for players. But so many come in without a knowledge at all, where they're chasing distance nine degrees, and they have a senior shaft in there. Yeah. Could lead to a lot of issues, right? Yeah. So. I mean, it's purely the distance versus dispersion debate. Yes. We have done some testing where I've hit from an 8 degree driver to even a 14 degree driver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is no doubt that when I hit a 12, 13, 14 degree driver, the thing flies dead, dead straight. It's got a lot of spin on it, it may only go 250 yards from me, but it is in the middle of the fairway every single time. Mm -hmm. But then you incorporate a tack angle into the piece there too. Huge like. You, you want to you want at least maximize the optimal ball flight. So you, if you're spinning the ball too much, 
let's face it, the guys on tour, they don't hit every single ferry all the time. No. Mm -hmm. You got to, believe it or not, it's like 60% of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when you got to optimize the loft. If you're attack angle, you're hitting up on it, you can have less loft on the driver. Yeah. But if you're hitting down on it, you need to tee that ball lower, and then you need more loft to be able to make good solid contact. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I can attest too on the loft piece. I played a nine degree driver for the past how many years? Mm -hmm. I've actually bought an eight degree driver this year, and I've lowered that even more, and I've gained you know 15, 20 yards off the tee just by doing that. So, so uh, by doing that, how many more fairways are you hitting though? Well, I'm not. But See? I didn't hit fairways anyway. <laughs> See, so yeah. that's I didn't hit fairways anyway. So <laughs> now I'm just farther, little farther down there in the rough. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of the, you know, we kind of, you talked about like the attack angle and sort of the swing dynamics now. The next piece I think is a little bit more of a, you know, swing uh, correction, if you will. But I sure. think when golfers see maybe the numbers mm -hmm. of like face to path yeah. on track, when they understand, okay, this is maybe something I can correct. Yeah. yeah. And I, I really want to break down what face to path means. I mean, club face, okay, yeah. so the club head in general. Yeah. And then path, meaning how we deliver the club to it. Yeah. Whether it's outside in or inside out. Yeah. Whatever that path is, that gets the golf club going, but then where that face is pointed then dictates kind of how the ball is going to shape outside for yeah. players too. Yeah. But we've seen it on both sides. Way from the inside, you'll see that a lot with my game at least <laughs> from the inside. And you'll see a lot of it more predominantly in the industry, more over the top or outside in. So we've seen both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it comes down to you just got to match the two of them up. Yep. So I mean, yes, there's going to be players that may be six degrees left, but if their face angle is also kind of six degrees left mm -hmm. along with the path, Ball is going to fly fairly straight. You're just going to need to aim right. <laughs> yeah. Right. The, the opposite occurs. So the people yeah. that, you know, if, if you're going the up into out mm -hmm. with having a, a face angle open, but if that face angle matches up, it's just going to be a push. Yeah. So really it comes down to the curvature on the golf ball. Yep. Finding a way to generate the least amount of curve you can. Ideally, yeah, you want your path as close to zero as you can. Right. But let's face it, that's not possible for every single golf swing. <laughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. And... You know, there's some different things that we play with, with outside in club path wise. Generally, the club sits down at impact, or that player delivers the handle higher at impact. So that pushes the toe down, flattens it. That's why a lot of players that are outside in need something to sit a little bit more upright, and vice versa. If I'm coming from the inside, my hands are generally low, which makes the toe sit up mm -hmm. or more upright lie angle. That's when you need to go a little bit flatter sometimes for mm -hmm. players too. So finding that dynamic lie, what players do at impact, building the club head that's going to complement that player's tendencies to then get the launch and spin right. Right. Because that's, right. that's whole ultimately you guys aren't this. trying to fix a swing necessarily, but no. you're trying to build the clubs that can work for the swing that the mm -hmm. player has. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and speaking of that too, there's you know also equipment that can be better or worse for somebody based on the club head. Yeah. Forgiveness levels have changed, Ooh. and you know manufacturers now have varying levels of. Uh, forgiveness levels in any club so yeah. talk to me about that and I think that's kind of our, our final piece here that you guys have really hit on or yeah. want to hit on is forgiveness yeah. yeah I think it's it's not just driver it's not just fairy wood hybrid versus driving iron or long iron mm -hmm. irons you're playing and the wedges you're playing and even yeah. the putter the MOI of the putter <laughs> yeah. so it's really every piece of technology that's in your bag you need to get dialed in for the type of golfer you are absolutely and that goes even for the golf ball too I mean I'll talk about the Srixon ball I play the divide the two-tone ball, it's remarkable how straight that dimple pattern is downrange on the driver. Unbelievable. But that's the last thing people think about is the ball that we, that they play. I just play whatever's out there. Yeah. Well, it's going to perform differently with mm -hmm. every ball. Right. So yep. getting the iron fit, getting the shaft fit, then getting a fit for the ball, game changer, night and day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for driver, it comes down to high MOI drivers mm -hmm. versus low spin versus kind of right in the middle yeah. there. I mean, yeah. if you need forgiveness, we don't want to have a low spin driver in someone's hand. No. It's going to be a little harder for them to control. They might not get yeah. enough spin that they need. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you talk about hybrids versus utility irons versus long irons. Mm -hmm. Depending on what you need for Gus forgiveness, you should be playing one or the other and not just try your best to hit a long iron as good as you can. Because at the end of the day, this game's hard. Yep. I, I'm going to tell you now, it's a very, very hard <laughs> game to play. There's a lot of golfers that, you know, you appreciate how good you you can get the ball around the hole, but that golf ball was small. The hole was small. <laughs> right. So technology is going to help you out. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah. For sure. Well, that's, I mean, those are five key points, I think, that you basically at every fitting that you guys do, one or, or more of those points is corrected during that fitting. So yeah. I guess we encourage golfers, if one of those five issues maybe seems like it's relevant to you, uh, you can schedule that fitting at Second Swing and end up working with one of these master fitters or any other of our, uh, on our staff here, and we'll help you out with your game, get 
you dialed in and play better golf. So Thomas and Danny, thanks for joining today, giving us the insight. I think uh, you know, moving forward, golfers will maybe pay attention to these and uh, start playing better golf. Absolutely, thanks for having me.